Hello guys, welcome to Ingenious Keep Me. Do hit the subscribe button if you are watching uh, my channel for the first time. Now we are going to solve this problem from chapter 16, Hibbler Dynamics. The problem says that the conveyor belt is moving to the right at 8 feet per second. And at the same instant, the cylinder is rolling counterclockwise with omega equals to 2 radian per second without slipping. Determine the velocities of the cylinder center C and point B at this instant. Now we are given that this conveyor is moving with a velocity V of 8 feet per second, and this with this in at the same moment the cylinder is rolling with an angular velocity of 2 radian per second in the counterclockwise direction without slipping. So whenever there is no slipping, uh, the velocity of this point, which is in contact with the conveyor belt will have the same velocity so we can say that the velocity of point a will be equal to the velocity of the conveyor which is equal to eight feet per second so we can say that the velocity of a is going to be towards the right this is the velocity of a equals to eight feet per second the velocity of the conveyor now we will solve this problem using two methods. We will solve this problem by using the instantaneous method and we will solve this problem by using the relative velocity equation. So first of all, I'm going to solve this problem by using the relative velocity equation. So we are uh, asked to find uh, Vb and velocity of C. So we know that from relative velocity equation, we can say that Vb is equal to uh, the velocity of A plus the velocity of b relative to a now as we know that the velocity of a is towards the right so let's assume that towards the right is our positive direction so we can say that v a is plus eight feet per second towards the right now the velocity of b relative to a is the velocity this velocity is always due to the angular velocity of the given link or the disc or the wheel so A is the wheel is rotating with a counterclockwise angular velocity of 2 radian per second. So this velocity of B relative to A is due to this angular velocity. So this means that uh, at this particular instant, the, the velocity of B relative to A will be towards the left. right? So for the velocity of B relative to A, we think that uh, point B is rotating about point A. So for this velocity, we think that the point A is fixed and this point B is revolving about that point A in a circular path with a radius of this much. So now we can say that the velocity of B relative to A is towards the left since the angular velocity is in the counterclockwise direction. So we can say that this is the velocity of B relative to A and its magnitude will be equal to its magnitude will be equal to this radius times this omega. So this diameter, which is the, the, the diameter of the disk is the radius of uh, the path of this point B about point A. So we think that this point B is revolving about that point A in a circular path. And that circular path will have a radius of this AB, which is the diameter of the disk. So we can say that uh, the, the velocity of B relative to A will have a magnitude of 2 feet. So the this is 2 feet times this omega. So we can say that this is 2 into 2. So this is basically 4 feet per second. And it is towards the left. And since we have assumed that towards the right is the positive, so this is negative. So we'll write minus, minus 4 feet. So Vb is plus 4 feet per second so velocity of b the absolute velocity of b is towards the right since we got the positive and it has a magnitude of 4 feet per second so which is uh, from this we b equals to plus 4 feet per second so the absolute velocity of b is towards the right and it has a magnitude of 4 feet per second and it is obvious that if this point a which is in contact with the conveyor is moving with an, a velocity of eight feet per second towards the right so after some time t the point b will be somewhere here but the resultant velocity of b is towards the right so since, since this point b has moved towards the right so this means that the, the resultant velocity of point b is towards the right 
so this is vb which is equal to plus four feet per second now we can find the velocity of c using this same uh, relative velocity equation so we can say that vc is equal to va plus the velocity of c relative to a so this will always come in the denominator and this will always come in the numerator so this is this will be the velocity of c relative to a now we can again we towards the right is the positive we can say that towards the right is the positive va is plus 8 now the velocity of c relative to a this will always be due to the angular velocity and again we can say that the velocity of c relative to a will be towards the left and this point c we consider this point c as if it is revolving about that point a in a circular path and the radius of that circular path will be equal to this which is the radius of the disc so we can say that the velocity of c is uh towards the left let's say and its magnitude will be equal to this length which is one feet multiplied by omega so that is we can say that this is a one times two which is equal to two feet per second so we we need to draw this velocity of c vector smaller than this if this represents four feet per second then we should draw this of smaller length so velocity of c is this 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 represents uh two feet per second so this is the velocity of c and it is a velocity of c relative to a this is velocity of c relative to a and it is towards the left again so we will say that this is minus 2 and this is uh, plus 8 minus 2 is plus 6 feet per second so the velocity of c um, the absolute velocity of c is plus 6 feet per second so this means that the velocity of c the resultant velocity of c is towards the right so this means that point c after some time t uh, point c will move towards the right so this is the absolute velocity of that point c which is the center of the of the cylinder which is rolling uh, without slipping on the conveyor belt now this was the method using this um, relative velocity equation now we are going to use the instantaneous velocity uh, instantaneous center of zero velocity method now from these two diagram um, after some time t this disc will uh, will look like this and point b will have some new position here but uh, as we know that this point a is moving with the velocity of uh, the conveyor and that is towards the right and overall the velocity of c is towards the right the resultant velocity of c will be towards the right since the whole disc is moving towards the right with the conveyor and the point b is also towards the right so we can say that velocity of c velocity of c is towards the right let me write like this this is the velocity of c and the velocity of b is towards the right as well so since we are going to use the instantaneous center of zero velocity and as we can see that velocity of a velocity of c and velocity of b they are parallel to each other so to find the instantaneous center of zero velocities um, uh, the instantaneous center of zero velocity for the velocities which are parallel what we do is that we join the tails of all of these velocities and we join the head of uh, the heads of all of these velocities and where wherever these two lines intersect that that will be the instantaneous center of zero velocities um, zero velocity for these three given velocities so we we need to uh, join the tails of these three velocities and we need to join the heads of these three velocities like this and wherever they intersect the, the, that particular point that uh, intersection point will be the instantaneous center of zero velocity for these three points for which the velocities are given so we are given va vp and vc so this is vb this distance is we know that this is the diameter of the disc and this is two feet so we can say let me write that this is this is the diameter and which is two feet and for the from the instantaneous center once we find the instantaneous we can always write the velocity of a velocity of c velocity of b using this equation we can write v equals to r omega so we can say that v a will be equal to uh, the radius of the distance of a 
point A relative to the instantaneous center times the omega. So this omega will always be this omega. So once we find the instantaneous center, we always think that this point A, this point C, and this point B, they are revolving about that instantaneous center in a circular path. So we think that this point A is revolving about that instantaneous center in a circular path, and we think that this point C is revolving about that instantaneous center in a circular path. And similarly, this point B is revolving about that instantaneous center in a circular path due to this angular velocity. So now, as we know that the angular velocity is in the counterclockwise direction so vA is having the velocity in this direction vc is having the velocity in the counterclockwise direction about that instantaneous center and vb vb is having the velocity in the counterclockwise direction about the instantaneous center so now we write that vA is equal to r of a i of c times omega and now r of a i of c is the vector from the instantaneous center to that point a and we can find that um, the magnitude of that vector directed from instantaneous center to that point a will be equal to va divided by omega now va is 8 which is given and omega is 2 so this gives us 4 feet so this means that the position vector the magnitude of the position vector of a relative to the instantaneous center is 4 feet so this means that if we draw a vector from instantaneous center to point a that vector will have a magnitude of four feet so this means that this length is this length is basically four feet so we can say that this length is this length is basically four feet now as we know that if this is four feet <clears throat> this is two feet then this is two feet Right, so we can say that this distance is two feet as well. So this is two feet. Now, using the same relation, we can say that velocity of c is equal to r of c relative to instantaneous center times omega. So for this, we think that this point c is revolving about that instantaneous center in a circular path and that circular path will have a radius of this this much that from here to here so <clears throat> the position vector of c relative to instantaneous center will be a vector from here to here so this vector will have length of two feet plus one feet so this is three feet so we can say that the velocity of c uh, relative uh, velocity of c is equal to this is now this is this is three feet right so if we draw a vector from here to here then this vector will have a magnitude of two feet plus one feet so three feet so we can say that this is three into two so this gives us velocity of c equals to six feet per second and as we know that this is towards the right and similarly we can write that v v b so again we b using this same relation we can say that we b is equal to r of b instantaneous center times omega now r of b instantaneous center will be a vector from instantaneous center to that point b and that vector will have a magnitude of two feet so now we can say that this will be equal to two feet times omega this gives us we b equals to four feet per second and again this is towards the right so now as you guys can see we got the same vb which is four feet per second and we got the same vc which is six feet per second towards the right so i hope this discussion will help you in your learning of uh, instantaneous center of zero velocity and relative velocity equation let me know uh, in the comments if this helps do subscribe engineers academy for the solution of such more problems from abler dynamics